Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn more about the edit poly mode and today we are going to focus on the border sub-object mode. And uh, after I show you some theoretical stuff, I'm going to try to model this column. I'm going to use border sub-object mode a lot in this example, so I thought this was suitable for uh, this uh, specific lesson. So whatever, let's start with a box. I'm going to apply an edit poly on top, hit 4 to delete this face. I'm going to tell you why I deleted it in a minute. Now uh, the shortcut for border is 3. If you hit 3 from the keyboard, uh, uh, you will see that you will be able to select the uh, edges of the deleted face. Uh, it helps you select the borders of an opening actually. Okay, what border does is this. So if you select this one, uh, hit W, you can hold shift and copy this for example. This is uh, called edge extrusion mode, which we will use in the column example. You can also use this in the edge mode, by the way. If you hit 2, you can select this edge and just hold shift and keep copying that edge. Uh, th by the way, this is the method I use the most. And uh, I can tell you that you can model anything with this uh, method, even a uh, face, even a car, uh, whatever you want to uh, model. Whatever, we will talk about this, uh, we will do some examples uh, about this as well. Uh, but for now let's keep stick with the border mode. I'm going to hit 3 and select this face again. Uh, now we have some uh, new comments under edit borders. Actually they are not that much new comments, uh, so to say we have one I guess. The other ones you know from other uh, sub-object modes. Uh, but I'm going to uh, show you how they work in border mode as well. I'm going to try extrude for example if you hit uh, extrude uh, of course I'm going to hit settings again. You can see that you can create a perpendicular face to this edge which is handy by the way. Um, sometimes uh, I do use this. Um, there are other ways to do this but I guess it's not the same with holding shift and scaling it because if you hold shift and scale you can see that it scales these edges a little bit more because of the ratio of these edges. If this edge is longer, uh, this edge will be longer as well. But if you uh, use extrude, let's try that again, you can see that it creates an even um, border around that. So uh, I guess this may come handy uh, and you mainly use this uh, for uh, this type of thing. And you can play with the width value as well, which will inset or move uh, the border inwards a little bit. Okay. Okay, insert vertex tool. I again don't recommend you to use this because it will create uh, five edged uh, faces, and you can see that how, you can see how it deforms right away. It looks ugly, so uh, makes tr is trying to tell you something here. Uh, so uh, try to see these type of signs uh, while uh, creating models. <laughs> and if you hit backspace, you can get rid of that ver vertex. Let's hit three again. Chamfer does the same thing with the edge chamfer, but this time to borders, I guess. Uh, I I guess I've never used uh, chamfer in border mode. I don't know uh, what this could be useful for. Uh, probably there are some intelligent tricks, but <laughs> I'm not that intelligent, I guess. So uh, for now, uh, let's leave this behind. And uh, cap uh, is one of the tools or commands I use a lot in uh, border, but you need to be careful about using cap. The reason is if you don't have a quad opening, then cap will just close that opening with a polygon. And that polygon could be could have more than four edges. So it's again uh, a little bit, uh, we need to be a little bit cautious at least while using this uh, tool. If you select this and hit cap, there, is no pro there are no problems. You can see that this is a quad face and we can uh, do any kind of stuff with this. But uh, let's say we have this type of a thing. I'm, I'm going to hit 2, select this, hit Alt R and uh, connect this. Let's create some more edges and even let's play with this, change the shape a little bit. Okay, now if you hit 3 and try to cap this border, you will see that it creates a non-quad surface which has a lot of edges actually and this is not very good because if you apply Turbo Smooth for example, uh, it's not going to look well. And or uh, if you try to select this hit R and connect this for example again actually it worked quite well maybe in the older versions uh, even 
this doesn't happen but again this is a little bit of a weird shape because we don't have quads all around so try to be careful while using um, cap i guess let's delete this i'm going to hit two select these uh, loops double clicking and i'm going to hit Control backspace which will get rid of those edges okay let's hit three again uh, another tool is bridge if you uh, we need two openings for this so i'm going to copy this shape mirror it and let's attach it attach this i'm going to hit three and select these two edges and if you hit bridge you can see that it will join those edges it's just like in the uh, edge tool uh, but it's applying it to uh, borders okay uh, connect is a little bit weird in borders mode let me show you why if i create a box apply and edit poly delete these faces select these uh, two borders and then hit connect it works but we could do this with edge as well I don't know how to really use this um, in a different way than an edge connect but uh, maybe we can think uh, as like we uh, click just twice and selected eight edges uh, maybe that's uh, fast I don't know but I I guess I never use this uh, with border okay uh, of course this this is my working method so uh, everybody has a different method uh, so maybe this is useful for something else uh, i i always say that you should watch other tutorials as well there are a lot of tutorials about modeling in 3ds max online uh, you can find a lot of different styles a lot of different uh, things so please go ahead and watch them don't just listen to me when i say that this this doesn't do anything yeah i'm just trying to communicate my way of thinking my way of modeling so uh, please uh, don't take this as a as the uh, rules of 3ds max or anything this is my workflow that's that's so whatever <laughs> the last thing i want to show you is create shape if you select this and hit create shape you will see that just like in the edge mode uh, we have a new spline in there and you can just add thickness to this for example and we know what this does from the edge mode again and you can see that these, these type of if you uh, leave the border like this it won't look that well in the, in, in a render but if you add uh, stuff like these the elements like this it will look much cooler even this is this looks more um, uh, complete to me than this so uh, this could be a nice trick okay let's uh, try to model this column now First thing I want to do is uh, I want to create the box uh, at the bottom in here. Let's input 80 by 80 by 10 for this. This is a huge column, I guess. And um, let's create a cylinder. Uh, let's input uh, 30 for the radius and 5 for the height. I'm going to hit Alt A and align this to the box. In the X, Y and Z positions, I want to place the uh, center of the cylinder to the center of the box. Hit Apply. And then in the Z axis, I want to place the minimum point of the cylinder to the maximum point of the box and hit OK. And you will see that we have uh, the base uh, of the column, I guess. Now let's uh, get rid of the height segments because we, we won't need them. And let's uh, decrease the sides to eight. Uh, whenever uh, I'm going to use Turbo Smooth for this uh, model, so whenever you are using Turbo Smooth, if you want to create uh, circles or circular shapes, cylinder-like shapes, I recommend you to use eight edges, which which is the I guess the minimum edge amount to create a perfect circle. Some use six, but eight is good enough because it's. Uh, I also like this because it's symmetrical in all X size, like. You have this shape going uh, around a lot so uh, it will come handy when we try to model more complex stuff okay let's apply an edit poly modifier you know how to do that now by now i'm going to hit 4 and delete this face because we need to be able to select this border i guess now i'm going to hit 3 select that border now this method is called edge extrusion as i told you before you we could create uh, this shape 
with a lathe as well. Uh, but I feel like I have more control over uh, the shape when I'm using Edit Poly. So I usually uh, prefer Edit Poly to uh, Spline Modeling. But of course, Lathe sometimes saves a lot of time. So I use that a lot as well. But for now, let's try to create this uh, with an Edit Poly method. Uh, first, I'm going to hit 5 and select this element. I'm going to scale this a little bit. I'm going to scale this up a little bit more uh, so that it, it looks more like this shape in here. I'm going to hit 3 again, select this face. Now, what we can do in edge extrusion is if you move this, uh, I'm going to hit 4 to uh, for you to see a little bit easier. If you just move this, it will just move the border. We know this from before. But if you hold shift and move this, then it will create a new uh, edge loop. And we are going to use this um, thing a lot okay i'm going to hit r to go to the scale mode hold shift scale this in i'm going to hit w hold shift scale this uh, move this up but as you can see i just didn't move it i extruded it up right so we have this edge if you didn't hold shift let me show you what happens if you didn't hold shift and move this up you can see that it moves up but if you hold shift and move this up you can see that it leaves a copy behind and creates a new uh, edge loop or border okay and with that a lot of new faces uh, polygons let's uh, do the same thing again hold shift create a new copy and another one this time i'm going to scale the, this uh, outwards and move again uh, copy that up i'm going to uh, copy that in and i'm going to hold shift and create another loop and then I'm going to just hold shift and create the rest of the column. I'm going to uh, create a symmetry of this uh, for the top side so I'm not going to worry about that right now but uh, keep in mind or try to be careful about this I left a border or an edge loop in here as well okay I'm not I, I haven't just uh, created something like just goes up from here I created a little uh, polygon in here, a short polygon or short extrusion in here and then a long one. The reason for this is in 3ds Max you try to even out these faces while when you are using uh, Turbo Smooth. If uh, there's just a planner two face like this you can go wild but if you have some turnings like this if this edge uh, is much smaller than this whole thing in here it would create uh, weird stuff. Actually, let me show you what it does first. Uh, I hit two, double click on the edge and hit control backspace to get rid of that edge loop. Now let me assign a turbo smooth on top. You can see that it looks a little bit weird in here. We have this weird um, curve, I guess, but let's bring this edge back with uh, undo. Now if I add a turbo smooth on top, you can see that we don't have that weirdness, okay? As I told you, you try to uh, keep the length of the faces similar to each other uh, while modeling this kind of a thing. Okay, um, I guess let's uh, turn both these to gray. I'm going to add chamfer to the bottom box. I'm not going to add chamfer to this because Turbo Smooth does uh, the smoothing for us. You don't need chamfers with turbo smooth. Uh, actually, be careful about that. It could create huge amounts of edges. Uh, so don't apply chamfers to turbo smooth modifiers. Um, maybe we can make this look a little bit more like this because editing is the is a real huge part of the uh, modeling phase. So I want to show how to edit as well. To do that, I will select this model, go to the edit poly. I'm going to disable sh uh, show end result. And now you can see that we have that uh, those edges back. We can play with them. We can scale them in or out or whatever we want to do. Uh, I'm going to hit F to go to the front view. I'm going to hit 4 to go to the polygon mode. And now I'm going to select all these polygons. And now I can just bring them in a little bit more. Uh, I can use show end result to see the end result. Okay. 
maybe um, maybe I want to emphasize this uh, step as well because we have more of a um, more of a, a um, accentuated I guess <laughs> edge over there. So let's do the same uh, here. I'm going to hold uh, shift. Uh, I'm going to select this polygon, hold shift, and click on the next one, which will select the polygon loop. We will see this in the next lesson. I'm going to move this up a little bit. You can hold, uh, you can see show and uh, hit show and result and see the end result again. And uh, what I see is I have a smoothing inwards in here, which I, which I really don't like. Uh, what I want to do is I want to hit two. I will select this edge, hit Alt R and connect that and move that down. You can see that we are getting into serious stuff <laughs> and uh, we can use these techniques to model anything. Remember that. So try to play with these, try to really understand what is going on. If you don't understand, please uh, ask me anything on the comments. Um, let's uh, create, oh, Alt R, let's create another connect in here. And you can see that we can accentuate this a little bit more. Uh, I hope I'm using the word right. Okay. Yeah. Now let's add the um, symmetry. I'm going to select both of these as a symmetry modifier. I'm going to choose Z and flip this. And you can see right away that we have this column in here. Also, I'm going to show you one more trick, which is very cool. If you want to create these indents in here, you can go to edit poly. Uh, sh click on show and result to see uh, this face. Actually, I'm going to apply one iteration turbo smooth. Actually, two is good, I guess. Yeah. And then use another edit poly on top, which is this, this gets a little bit complex, I know, but if you can, you can leave it in here. Don't worry. If you don't really understand what's going on, don't worry about that. But uh, we will talk about this stuff as well. Uh, what I want to do is I want to select these faces. Uh, I'm not going to select all of them. Just let me select two. There are shortcuts for this as well, but I guess I have uh, given you enough um, theoretical things, comments in this tutorial. So let me show this to you only for these two edges. I'm going to hit extrude and you can extrude them inwards. And when you add a turbo smooth on top of this, you can see that we have those indents as well, which looks very cool. If you model things, they always look very good. Uh, if you create, try to create them with textures and displacements, nah, it doesn't. I, I guess modeling is uh, very cool. Uh, I really like clay, the look of clay models as well. So uh, they look very good to me. You can see that you can repeat this uh, around the column, uh, at least for now. I'm going to show you some faster ways to select these type of things, uh, which will be a very cool lesson because uh, it saves me a, huge amount of time and I want to share those uh, little uh, weird secrets with you as well. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.